Hello and welcome to another creative coding video. Today we're going to look at a new topic, quite an exciting one actually, and we're going to be looking at something called functions. Now don't worry if the word functions is a little unfamiliar, everything will become clear as we progress. So I'm logged into open processing as usual and you can see I've got the setup with the simple instruction and I've enabled the simple library, simple.js as usual. And from the last video, you'll remember that we wrote some instructions to draw a flower using a yellow circle in the middle and four red circles going around it. You'll also remember that we started to use variables as a way to make the code more general and less specific about where the flower was going to be. You'll, you'll remember that we used variables x and y to write the code for drawing the flower so that the code itself didn't need to know where the flower was we could say where the flower was by setting x and y to be a particular number or even a random number. Now, if you're, if you're not familiar with that or if it's been a while, definitely go back and have a look at the last video because we're carrying pretty much straight on from there. So definitely worth going back and having a quick reminder. But just to recap, we wrote code to create some variables x and y for the location of the flower we set the x and y to be random numbers and then based on x and y we drew the flower with a yellow centre of size 100 and then four circles around that central yellow circle which were red for the flower petals. So let's run this code. It's no different from what we wrote last time. And there's a flower with a yellow middle and four red petals around the outside. If you run it again, it should be in a different place. Sometimes it goes off the edge of the, um, of the canvas. And this is why variables were quite powerful, because they allowed us to remember a number that was picked, chosen, and then we could use that again and again in our code. Now, I'm just going to make this flower smaller. So I'm going to shift those petals closer to the center by changing the shift which was 100 to 50 and just making them a bit smaller as well. There you go. If we run that code we should get a slightly smaller uh, flower yeah, that's smaller, isn't it? Cool. Now, the question today is, what if we wanted to draw two flowers? Well, we could write this code out again. We could repeat this code. We could copy and paste it, and that would work. We'd have all this code repeated here. In fact, let's try that. It's a bit boring, but uh, it kind of illustrates the point. So I'm going to paste it there. So it's almost like a second copy of that same code. If I run it, I should get two flowers. Yep. That kind of works. Has the right effect anyway. But it's actually not the most elegant way of drawing two flowers. Because if we said not two, but four or a hundred or even 2,000 flowers, we wouldn't want to copy this code 2,000 times. That really wouldn't be um, very, very elegant. So what we're going to do is we're going to think, hmm, for each of those flowers, the code is the same. We're just repeating the code, aren't we? It would be nice if we could call that code, run that code many times without having to 
type it all again and again. And there's a really nice way of doing that, a way of packaging that code so that it is reusable. And that's what the word function does. That's what it means. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's let's create this new thing which we're going to use again and again. So I'm going to cut and like cutting and pasting. I'm going to cut all that code, and I'm going to create something called a function. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my flower. You could, in fact, have called it anything you liked, but it's useful to uh, give these things a, a name that tells you what it does. You might come back to your own code a few weeks later, or you might get somebody else to read your code, and it's helpful if they can understand what your code does with clues like the name of, of your function. So you can see there's some similarities here between what we've just written here, function my flower, and things that have always been there and we've not really talked about. We've talked about the setup section, and that was actually a function. We've talked about the draw section where we wrote our own instructions for, for drawing circles and picking colours. That was a function. We're now creating a new one that goes alongside those. And we're going to tell our computer that we're creating a function by saying function. We're saying this is the name and inside those curly brackets are the instructions. So I'm just going to paste that there. Those are the exact same instructions that we wrote for drawing the flower. So you can see now that the exact same instructions we wrote for drawing a flower are no longer inside the draw function, they're inside this new thing we've created, this new function called my flower. So if we run that code, it's useful to see what happens. Let's try running it. Hmm, nothing's happening. That actually makes sense because what we've done is we've created a function but not used it. Remember, it's the draw function that causes things to be drawn. And at the moment, there's nothing there. All we've done is we've said, we're creating a function called my flower, but when we've not referred to it anywhere inside draw. So let's do that. And the way to do it is just to use its name, my flower. And we use these um, empty brackets. We'll explain what they are later, but for now we just remember that we always use them. So let's talk through what should happen. Our draw section, which usually contains instructions for drawing shapes and picking colours, now has one instruction called my flower. What is my flower? It's not an instruction like circle or random number or fill. It's a new thing and that thing is our function that we've written. So if I run it, if I run the code now, it should run the code that's inside there. Yep, if I run that again. You can see the flower is being drawn at random places on the canvas. And that's not a surprise because that's what our code does. That's what we designed and wrote last time. The difference now is that we are running that code by packaging it all up inside something called a function, giving it a name. And now we're going to use that name whenever we want to run all this code. Now what happens if I call it again? So we're calling my, func my flower 
once here and again. It should run all this code twice. Let's see if it does. Yep, you can see two flowers are being drawn. And again, they're being drawn at random places on the canvas, which is what we've told the code to do. Now this is a much neater way of drawing the flowers twice. We, our instructions for drawing the flower haven't been copied and pasted twice. That wasn't a very neat or elegant way of doing it. Now we've called that code twice simply by referring to a name we've given the function. What if I said, what if I wrote that my flower four times? It should run that code four times. Yep. That works. It's quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> the important point here is we've not had to repeat writing all this code four times. We've simply used this instruction, my flower, four times, which is much simpler, much neater and much more efficient. And that's one of the really good benefits of using a function. It allows us to repeatedly use a useful bit of code as many times as we want without having to copy and paste it as that many times. So this is quite a nice um, kind of simple illustration of what a function is. And the way to think about it is it's useful code that we'd like to use again and again. We wrap it into a function. We kind of put it in a box as it were, and we put a label on it, which is the name of the function. And here we've called it my flower. And that means we can keep that function somewhere in our code and we can use it as many times as we like. So that's quite neat. That's quite, quite clever. Now there are more things we can do with f functions and we'll come to those in another video. But for now, this is a really kind of simple and quite powerful um, illustration of, of what, they can, what they can do. Now I'm going to um, do something else just to, um, just to show us um, some of the power of packaging up code inside a function. This is our definition of what a flower is. What if I changed it? What if I said the petals weren't red but were pink? If I now run the code, aha, uh -huh. you see, all of those flowers that are drawn now have pink petals. And all we did was change one thing inside this function which defines my flower. Now that's another powerful thing about functions. It means we can keep the definition of useful things like a flower inside there. And if we ever need to improve them or change them, we only need to do it once and just in that one place. And every time we or someone else wants to use that function, that flower, our improvement benefits them all. So we have our, ourselves using my flower four times. We've made a little improvement to the code and all of those uses have benefited from it. So that's another powerful benefit of functions. I'm going to make another little change just because it's fun. I'm going to make the center bigger. There we go. I've just made the central yellow circle much bigger. So all the flowers that are drawn have that changed. I actually don't like it, so I'm going to change that back. There we go. Change 
changing that back to red and all the flowers are now red again cool so that's that's enough for today and um, that that kind of introduces the idea of of what a function is and we can think about it as a way of packaging up useful code giving it a name which allows us to call that code just by using its name and that means we can use it many times much more efficiently and the second benefit is that any changes or improvements we make to that code benefits anyone who uses that function fantastic so next time we'll explore a little bit more what we can do with with functions but that's that's a good start for today have an experiment yourselves um, try making your own sort of patterns and shapes and packaging them up as a function and then using that function yourselves you don't have to call your functions my flower you can call them something else um, but use something that's descriptive fantastic okay um have fun and uh, we'll see you next time bye